Good evening, everyone, and welcome to um, our event tonight. This is the District versus uh, Citywide Elections Virtual Workshop. My name is Stephen Hale. I'm the Public Information Officer for the City of Paris. Um, we want to welcome everybody to this event that's going to be taking place. This meeting is being recorded. Um, it will be available for playback on our social media platforms as well as on our website, which you can access at www.cityofparis.org slash district elections. Um, a lot of this information that we're going to have tonight is uh, for informational purposes. We will also be taking some Q&As should anybody submit those. And in the event that we do have some questions and answers, there will be a printed record of those which we will again post on our website, cityofparis.org slash district elections. Uh, joining me today is our team from Trepepe Smith, and I'm gonna turn this over to Ms. Jennifer Fitzgerald, who will take this uh, meeting and she will handle this as our host for tonight. So without further ado, um, Jennifer, thanks for being with us and the floor is yours. Hi, thanks Stephen so much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started. There we go. Uh, we are here tonight um, because the City Council uh, has given staff direction um, to conduct uh, public outreach to gauge the election processes that the city use to, uses to elect its City Council. Uh, you might have seen this effort explained on the city's Facebook page uh, or through the city's weekly video messages. Uh, regardless, tonight we want uh, to take the time to explain the different options available uh, locally and get your feedback on what processes you think uh, is best for the city of Paris. Um, the city's working uh, with us, as Stephen mentioned, at Trepepe Smith to reach out to the community uh, via online platforms. Uh, this virtual workshop as well as an in-person workshop that will be held September 7th in the council chambers at 6 p.m. So uh, as I said, um, I'm Jennifer Fitzgerald and we're, uh, we've got Stephen who you met. And also I wanna introduce you to Robert Koo who's the city attorney, and he'll be here tonight if there are any legal questions uh, that we need to cover. We also have a Spanish interpreter with us this evening. If there are Spanish speakers with us who want to ask questions, uh, then the Spanish interpreter um, is here to help you uh, get answers to those questions. Mary? Buenas noches. Esta noche puede hacer preguntas en español en la barra lateral de Q y A en sus siglas en inglés. Pregunta y respuesta. Y el intérprete traducirá la que usted para que usted pueda participar. Gracias. Thanks, Mary, very much. So tonight we're going to provide information on the two election processes available to you. We're going to highlight their differences and the implications of each election process, as well as the two systems benefits. We'll also share district elections logistics, legal requirements for moving to district elections, and optional timelines. Lastly, and most importantly, we'll take your feedback and questions and talk about future opportunities for involvement. Uh, before we get started, a little Zoom tutorial this is a webinar, so you'll see the panelists throughout the meeting. We're sharing our screen with you so you can follow the presentation materials. And if you want to ask a question or share opinions and feedback, simply click on Q&A and type in your question or feedback there. That data is available to the panelists and will enable us to address your input. And additionally, all input in the Q&A, as Stephen mentioned earlier, will be made part of the public record of this effort and given to the City Council at its September 28th meeting. As mentioned earlier, we do have a Spanish interpreter on Zoom, so please, uh, our Spanish speakers, take advantage of that. And again, if you miss any part of tonight's presentation, this meeting is being recorded and will be available online. So tonight, our uh, overview of our workshops before you, and we're going to go into everything um, from uh, the at-large city elections that you currently have to what would change if we went into district elections. And, uh, and as soon as we can, we'll get to your feedback. 
So why does the process matter? Well, we live in a representative democracy. When we elect our city councils, we cede some manner of our own power to them. We give them permission to make decisions that directly impact our lives. What kind of public safety will protect our community? How many parks will we have and what amenities will they offer? How do our roads, water, sewer systems stay maintained? This decision, how we elect our city council, is really one of the most important that we can make. The city of Paris currently elects its city council through a system called at-large elections. This means that all the registered voters in a city can cast a vote for each of the four members of the Paris City Council and the mayor. The at-large election system in Paris has produced a long history of diversity on city council. Since 1978, numerous council members have come from the Latino and African-American communities. Both men and women have served this city as its elected representatives. Currently, the city council represents geographic diversity as well. Council members come from the north end, downtown, the very southern end, the central area, and the very east central area. If the city of Paris changed the way it elects its city council to by district elections, the city council would adopt a voting district map that would create voting districts. The city council would choose how many districts to create, and each council member would be elected by only the voters in that election district. Council members would continue to be elected to four-year terms, and the terms of election would be staggered across election cycles. So with its current configuration, two council members would be elected during each election. For instance, as it is now, two council seats will be up for election in 2022 and the other two council member seats will be up for election in 2024. District elections will not change that schedule, but it could change which council seats are set for which election. So let's take a closer look at the two election processes and highlight some benefits of each. So let's start with at-large elections. Right now, every eligible voter in the city can cast a ballot for every member of the city council. Regardless of where a resident lives in the city, they have the opportunity to vote for each of the four council representatives. Every voter gets to vote for city council members at each regularly scheduled election. For instance, in 2022, every registered voter has the opportunity to vote for two council members. In 2024, Registered voters have the opportunity to cast a vote for two more council members. All council members are directly accountable to all of the city's voters uh, because every eligible voter within the city has a vote for or against a council member. So even if a council member lives in downtown because of voter accountability, it stands to reason, they'll give equal weight to not only their downtown neighbors, but also to those who live in, say, the very south end. Uh, by contrast, with district elections, which have gained popularity in California in the last couple decades as a result of the California Voting Rights Act, um, the California Voting Rights Act empowers neighborhoods and communities of interest to elect a representative they feel will best represent their perspective. Often neighborhoods and communities of interest have felt underrepresented on elected bodies and district elections are seen as a way to elevate these diverse communities. We'll talk more about communities of interest on the next slide. In by district elections, city council candidates must be a registered voter in the voting district they're running to represent. Whereas citywide elections can be expensive and thereby limit the number of people who can afford to run for office, by district elections lower the cost for candidates. Each neighborhood within the city has the opportunity to elect someone to advocate for that particular neighborhood's concern. For historically underrepresented communities, this is seen as one of the biggest benefits of by district elections. Uh, 
The California Voting Rights Act prioritizes creating voting districts that consider and respect communities of interest. Common schools, places of worship, cultural heritage, socioeconomic conditions are examples of things that constitute communities of interest. So tonight's meeting is intended to give uh, an overview uh, of these election systems and to, elicit, and to solicit your feedback. We don't intend to lead you to one system, um, but to give you the facts and to seek your opinions. So now's the time uh, to ask any questions you might have uh, on the difference between at-large elections and by-district elections. Uh, to ask a question or to provide feedback, just place uh, your question in the Q&A sidebar and we'll do our best to address it. Uh, a question that has been asked um, is, if the city moves to district elections, what does the timeline look like? And that's a great question and we're gonna address it in just a little bit. The city council has uh, a really multiple options in regard to when uh, district elections could be implemented in the city of Paris. Another question is how many districts will there be? Again, uh, the city council has wide latitude in setting uh, the number of voting districts in the city of Paris. Um, there is no set rule on how many there have to be. Now the voting districts have to be nearly equal in population. Uh, that's a requirement. So the sheer size of the city uh, may dictate how many uh, voting districts uh, the city council chooses to go to. But again, that's up to them. Another question we've gotten is why uh, have other cities moved to district elections? Uh, and the answers are as numerous as there are cities in California. Uh, as mentioned earlier, um, many historically underrepresented uh, communities feel as though uh, they have better representation uh, through by district elections rather than at large elections. Uh, in some cities, uh, there has been, uh, people have thought that there's a lack of diversity on the city council historically and that if there were by district elections instituted, more members of diverse communities would have a better chance of being elected. Let's see, seeing no other questions, let's go ahead and go on uh, to our district elections uh, decisions and timelines. So we're going to talk about the what ifs. What if the city of Paris decided to move to by district elections? So there are many decisions, as we just mentioned, uh, to be made if the city decides to move to by district elections. The city council would initiate a public process that would include public participation. Some of the decisions that would have to be made include how many voting districts should Paris have? As we just discussed, there is wide latitude given in that area. California law in that matter stipulates requirements for generally equal population, as I mentioned, uh, in each voting district. And the law prioritizes um, what the cities can and must consider and may not consider when creating voting districts and drawing district lines. Another decision point is what election cycle are each district's council members up for election? With the current makeup of the city council, two seats would be up for election every two years. And the law requires cities to hold at least four public hearings during the map uh, drawing and adoption process. Cities are encouraged to go above and beyond that legal requirement and also conduct community outreach. Cities are required to have districting information on a website and to prepare a public outreach plan. There are online mapping tools available to help members of the public uh, draw maps themselves. Uh, and in that way, uh, get involved in the process, as well as highlight what the public thinks 
and considers are their communities of interest. There are also paper kits uh, for folks to draw maps if they don't have internet access or are more comfortable using paper mapping tools. So here we talk a little bit about the timeline. If the city of Paris decided to move to by district elections for the 2022 election cycle, for instance, it would have to move pretty fast. Generally speaking, the city council would have to adopt a district formation ordinance and adopt a map for the new districts by April, 2022. Now the county registrar of voters is the final arbiter of when uh, maps would need to be finalized. If the city wanted to move to districts but wanted to allow more time to do so, then in order to go to by district elections by 2024, the city council could conduct public outreach between now and 2022 and then from 22 to 23, the city would host the required public hearings to draft maps for final adoption ahead of the June 2024 election. So we'll pause here a moment to have uh, some more time for questions and answers uh, on the various decisions that need to be made uh, or the timeline for by district election implementation. So again, you can type your question into the Q&A sidebar and we'll do our best to address those. Uh, let's see, uh, a question has come up um, about how to be more involved in the process. So the question is, what are the best ways to be involved in this process if Paris decides to move to at district elections? Well, of course, attending a webinar like this and getting armed with good information is a great first step. Um, there are uh, lots of redistricting and district formation efforts going on throughout the state of California because of the census, uh, the 2020 census. So based on the 2020 census uh, population numbers, cities that all already are in districts um, have to reassess those districts and potentially change those district lines. So once this process starts, um, as I mentioned, there will be public hearings and potentially public workshops. And so a great way to be involved is to attend those either, either virtually or in person. And make sure that the city understands what you think your neighborhood entails and what uh, communities of interest you believe the city must respect as it, if it would go to district elections. Another question that we've gotten is, who has the final say uh, on the adopted map if the city chose to go to district elections? Uh, the Paris City Council would be the final decision maker uh, on going to district elections and on adopting a map for voting districts. Another question that we got is, uh, okay, so you say that uh, there will be uh, public engagement if the city decided to go to district elections, what does that look like? Um, public outreach uh, includes a, uh, an online platform through a website uh, that entails all of the information about how the public can get involved. The entire purpose of the website is to offer the opportunity and the information uh, for its residents to get involved. And as I mentioned, workshops where you would actually get to sit down with a professional demographer and draw maps yourselves or give feedback on which communities of interest need to be considered in the city. Uh, the city would most likely engage with the public on social media and through local traditional media, as well as through community events, uh, trying to get as many people engaged in that process as possible. Let's see, looking through uh, the rest of the questions, um, what exactly uh, is a community of interest? Um, as we mentioned earlier, examples. Um, of a community of interest include commonalities that exist uh, in neighborhoods, uh, like common places of worship, 
common schools, uh, cultural heritage or socioeconomic uh, status. And let's see if we have anything else. It's interesting too, when you um, participate in a district election public feedback process and engagement process, uh, then residents are also asked to look at their neighborhoods and comment on what are the natural geographical boundaries for their districts. There have been updates to California's law that require that voting districts be completely contiguous, that someone would be able to walk uh, the entire district without leaving that district. Um, so there are, is the opportunity for residents to comment on what natural geographic boundaries like freeways or railroad tracks uh, or major thoroughfares exist. Let's see. So I think we can probably go on uh, to the next um, slide, which is to get uh, more of your feedback. Uh, I know we've given you a great deal of information tonight, so you may still be absorbing it, not ready to give us your insights on this issue. Uh, however, we'd really like to get your initial feedback and thoughts. Uh, and if you haven't already typed your question into the Q&A and your feedback, uh, your feedback now is what we really want um, for you to, uh, to type into the Q&A so we have a public record of that. Uh, there are a couple other uh, questions that are commonly asked that I want to make sure uh, we answer tonight. Uh, how often are new district lines drawn in cities that use by district elections? As I mentioned the census earlier, every 10 years, uh, population numbers are updated uh, through the federal census. And it's those uh, population numbers, that data that then informs the creation of new districts, uh, new voting districts in cities. So right now, uh, the state of California has the census data from the federal government and is adjusting it uh, for state prisoner related population information. And that final official information should get to cities uh, by the end of September, early October. So every 10 years, if you have by district elections in your city, uh, those districts need to be updated. Uh, another question that uh, you might have is why can't we extend the time frame, the decision-making process if we wanted to uh, consider district elections for 2022? And unfortunately, the timeline that cities are on is prescribed by law. So there's no flexibility in that regard. Some cities that go to district elections uh, choose to use an advisory redistricting commission or an independent commission uh, to make the decision on uh, district voting rather than have the city council or the county board of supervisors make that decision. Um, and those are decisions that are available to every governmental body that uh, decides to go to district elections. Uh, let's see, uh, let's make sure we answer all the questions that there are. And again, we appreciate everyone's feedback. Um, you know, a good question uh, that was asked is if, I am watching this presentation later, or I think of a question uh, after we're done, um, how can I make sure that my ideas are shared? And so I wanna tell you what's next. Uh, we have an in-person workshop coming up on September 7th, uh, 2021 from six to 7.30 at the Paris City Council Chambers, and we invite you all to join us. Uh, and you can also at any time email your thoughts, questions, and feedback to districtelections at cityofparis.org. We really need to spread the word as well with your neighbors, your fellow community volunteers, your families at school, and your colleagues at work, because we want to get as much Paris feedback on this important topic as possible. So again, email your thoughts, questions, and feedback 
to district elections at cityofparis.org. And Stephen, with that, I think I'll turn it back to you to close us out this evening. Okay, thank you very much, Jennifer. And thank you to everybody who logged on and joined us for this uh, for this meeting tonight, this virtual meeting. I, I know we had some folks that were watching across our Facebook and YouTube platforms as well. As Jennifer said, this video will be available for playback on PTV, which you can access on Facebook, on YouTube, and on your Channel 3 public access channel. It'll also be available at cityofparis.org slash district elections. As Jennifer said, a reminder, we have an in-person workshop, which will be similar to this, coming up on Tuesday, September 7th at 6 p.m., and that'll be in the city council chambers. And of course, you can always email your thoughts, questions, or feedback to districtelections at cityofparis.com. The next event will also be live streamed, but if you wish to make a comment, you'll need to attend in person where we'll have social distancing and public health practices in place. I think that's it for all of us here at PTV in the city of Paris. So thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you hopefully on September 7th. Thank you to all our panelists who joined in and everybody else have a good evening and we'll talk to you soon.